My main drive, comprising of Windows and all my current projects, failed on me the other day. I keep good backups, yet it still surprised me how inconvenient this whole ordeal was. So I'm here to warn you of the problems with relying on backups, especially once the backup process has become nothing more to you than an ingrained tradition that you follow without thinking about too much. The biggest inconvenience for me was my own laziness. I had a working backup PC, and had I immediately just set that up with all the drives and data that I needed, then it wouldn't have been much of a problem. However, I didn't bother doing that because the new drive was ordered on next day delivery, so I thought I'd just take it easy for the day and to start off with a fresh Windows installation the following day when it arrived. But while the tracking service told me it was going to be delivered the following day, it wasn't. Nor was it the day after that either. After that, I stopped getting new updates on the delivery, which kicked my ass into gear and I finally got around to setting up a working backup PC with all of the drives and data that I required. Then, five minutes later, the new drive fell through my letterbox, and I spent the rest of the day setting up my main PC again with all of the drives and a fresh copy of Windows. Three days of my time wasted, along with everything I had just sitting on my desktop, which hadn't been backed up since I only do that with my projects once they're finished. I'll be honest, this is one of those things. You can't anticipate it in advance, and only with hindsight do you know how you should have dealt with it. But having endured this whole pain, it'll help me to revise my working process to better prepare for such emergencies in the future. I know you'll be like, why didn't you do X? And the answer to all those things is because X required effort, compared with Y which seemingly required less, at least in the short term. For instance, the most logical thing to do would have been to add a new drive with Windows on to my new PC. A mixture of things prevented me from doing this, namely a lack of SATA ports, no spare NVMe drives lying around, and me not wanting to gut my backup PC for something that would fix itself the following day when the post arrived. So the next most logical thing would have been to get all my drives and to put them into my backup PC, and just to use that one as my main one until the new drive arrived. But this wasn't easy either, because, for once, I had actually built my new PC properly. Why case manufacturers do everything they can to hide installed hard drives away in the most difficult to reach spots, I do not know. And remember, the Royal Mail was promising the delivery in under 24 hours, so it didn't seem worth the hassle of this either. So I guess my inaction was a mixture of laziness and false hope. Diagnosing my SSDs problem was hard enough. Can I just say how disappointed I've been with SSDs? I thought they were meant to remain accessible in the event of failure, but it turns out they're real bastards. I've had some die completely on me, but this one that's just failed on me would just blue screen of death constantly. Resetting the CMOS seemed to make it slightly better, letting me reach the desktop about 25% of the time, but then after a random amount of seconds my mouse would freeze and I'd get a blue screen again. It made it much harder to diagnose the problem than a total failure would have done. Both the SSD drive and the CMOS battery happened to be beneath the GeForce 4090, and so I had to take that thing out over and over again, and because of how big my CPU cooler is, I can't reach the PCI release switch easily, and I ended up slicing myself open on that several times, until I switched out the GeForce 4090 for a much smaller Radeon 6500 XT, just to make the diagnosing easier and less painful. So no, that's why I did what I did, and why I didn't do what I didn't but it meant that instead of accessing a current password backup, I instead relied on an older backup, which I store offline away from the hassle of computers or the internet. Problem is, there's a slow and silent creep of new programs and habits that you develop over time on the internet, and you don't realise that until you revisit an old emergency offline backup of stuff. So while I was easily able to retrieve a copy of my accounts and passwords, it turned out that most were fairly outdated and I created more problems than I fixed by having to reset all my passwords, since they're all now different from my more recent password backups that I keep, which obviously I'll be returning to once I have access to them, since they also include more recent sites and accounts that I've set up. In other words, because I had to reset all my passwords, I created short-term accessibility at the cost of long-term convenience. And the last issue I had with this whole procedure is something that I will address from now on, and that's the number of half-finished projects that I leave on my desktop. These are projects that I start on, and then other things take priority, and so I leave them in a half-finished state for me to return to at a later date. And this is stuff that I don't bother backing up, since all these half-finished projects shouldn't really exist in the first place. Their data should be a continually changing thing, day by day, and then backed up once they become finished video files at the end of the day. But again, laziness. I got lucky this time. I managed to get the failed SSD working for just long enough to be able to save all these half-finished projects, so that they can remain half-finished on my new drive forevermore instead. Nothing here is too essential. I can do it all again, but in total it's months worth of stuff that I've kind of worked on but never got around to finishing, and so it would have wasted even more of my time had I lost this stuff forever. 
So here's what I'm going to do differently in future. For a start, my backup PC isn't just going to be a backup PC anymore. I suppose until now I've seen it as being a thing to get my main one up and running again, but I'll treat it more like its own completely separate entity from now on, with all the drives and programs installed to make it an equally viable platform for me to use to make videos on, and I'll be sure to do so from time to time, just to keep it feeling familiar and up to date. This means that if my main PC does fail me again, then I won't have to impatiently try and find a solution. I'll just hunker down on the backup until the fix presents itself. Secondly, I'm going to find ways of condensing my half-finished project folder down, down to a size that I can easily copy onto a thumbstick, along with other essential operating data. It's currently hundreds of gigabytes in size, full of video files and stuff which are included in it to keep each project as a single convenient folder, but due to the size of all these half-finished projects, it has become too inconvenient to try and back it up anywhere else instead hence the whole problem I found myself in. So I'm going to make a rule where I keep half finished videos as nothing more than a text document and a few pictures until I'm ready to actually work on them and to finish them. The third thing I've learned is that maybe it's worth having a few spare NVMe drives lying about. I have lots of spare standard SSD drives, but my new motherboard doesn't support enough SATA ports for me to be able to plug another one of those in without sacrificing one of my backup or data drives, so I've become reliant on NVMe for my Windows installation and where I work on my videos from. And the final and perhaps most important thing I've learned from all of this is to not be lazy. It isn't enough just to have excellent and up-to-date backups. You also need a convenient way of accessing those backups without having to completely dismantle the computer you're working on, only to then have to mantle it again in the near future. So just like some places do with air raid sirens or fire exit drills, I need to have some kind of easy backup restoration system in place that I know, that I trust, and that I understand. And I guess the last thing I've learned is, don't trust Royal Mail with next day deliveries.